Time Warner Audiobooks presents The Daily Show with Jon Stewart presents America the Book, the audiobook, a citizen's guide to democracy in action. America the Book, the audiobook, is intended to give students a basic understanding of the fundamental underpinnings of the United States government, its history, and its people. It should not be considered a replacement for watching television. Chapter 1. Democracy Before America In this chapter, you will Witness thousands of years of history casually dismissed in a few minutes. Learn the difference between a totalitarian regime and a post-communist kleptocracy. Realize that no matter how horrible your life is, it's not as bad as a feudal serfs. It is often said that America invented democracy. This view is, of course, an understatement. But our perfect democracy, which neither needs nor particularly wants voters, is a rarity. It is important to remember there still exist many other forms of government in the world today, and that dozens of foreign countries still long for a democracy such as ours to be imposed on them. To regain our sense of perspective and wonder, we must take a broader historical view, looking beyond America's relatively recent success story to examine our predecessors and their adorable failures. Early man, more animal than political. The human race is by nature brutal, amoral, unreasonable, and self-centered. But for the first few hundred thousand years of our existence as a species, we were way too obvious about it. Primitive culture centered on survival of the individual, and occasionally survival of someone the individual might want to reproduce with. Alone, they were mammoth meat. Together, they would become a force, with a chance to see the day when their children's children would be only 75% covered in hair. From these noble impulses, the groundwork for the first civilizations was laid. Athens, our big fat Greek forerunners. Ancient Greece is widely credited with creating the world's first democracy. It would be a worthy endeavor to travel back in time to the fata strewn shores of 5th century B.C. Athens and ask Plato to define democracy, and not only to make money gambling on Olympic results that we, being from the future, would already know. Plato would tell us, in that affectionate but non-sexual way of his, that democracy is a Greek word, combining the roots for people, demos, and rule, kratia. In Greek democracy, political power was concentrated not in the hands of one person or even a small group of people, but rather evenly and fairly distributed among all the people, meaning every John Q. Publicopolis could play a role in Athenian government. The main legislative body, the assembly, was comprised of no less than the first 6,000 citizens to arrive at its meetings. And bear in mind, no saving seats. Compared with American democracy, the Athenian version seems simplistic, naive, and gay. Yet transcripts of early Athenian policy debates reveal a populace moved more by eloquence and rationality than demagogues and fear-mongering. Thankfully, this type of humane governance wasn't allowed to take root. Athens' great experiment ended after less than two centuries, when, in 338 B.C., Philip of Macedon's forces invaded the city inflicting on its inhabitants the eternal fate of the noble and enlightened to be brutally crushed by the armed and dumb. Rome, the First Republicans The fall of Athens was followed by the emergence overnight of Rome. At first glance, its people appear to have enjoyed a system of representative government similar to ours. True, behind its facade of allegedly representative officials lurked a de facto oligarchy ruled by entrenched plutocrats. But the similarities don't end there. In fact, the Founding Fathers borrowed many of their ideas from the Roman model, including its bicameral legislature, its emphasis on republicanism and civic virtue, and its Freudian fascination with big white columns. However, there was very little real democracy in Rome. While the Senate theoretically represented the people, in reality, its wealthy members covertly pursued pro-business legislation, But by the time of Rome's huge millennium celebration marking the beginning of 0 A.D., 
the faint light of Roman democracy was all but extinguished. The Republic had given way to empire. The only voting to speak of took place in the Colosseum and was generally limited to a handful of disembowelment-related issues. In time, the empire itself fell. As history teaches us, all empires inevitably must. Its most enduring legacy, a numerical system that allowed future generations to easily keep track of Super Bowls.